Hey, Troy Dean here again, and in part two of this video training series, you're going to discover the exact funnel to use to attract high quality clients who respect your process and pay you what you're worth. This is the exact same funnel I use and thousands of my students use, and I'm gonna walk you through the entire funnel in just a moment. And if you stay with me until the end, I'm gonna send you a special worksheet that will help you take everything you learn in this video and implement it in your business immediately. And as I said in the first video, if you don't stay with me until the end, I'm sorry, but you won't get the worksheet because I wanna reward those of you who take action and commit. Okay, in the meantime, make sure you're taking some handwritten notes with pen and paper that you can transfer into that worksheet at the end. So before we dive in, I just wanna say a huge thank you for all the comments and positive feedback we've had on that first video. In that first video, we talked about how everything you've been told about lead gen and getting clients is totally wrong, and I explained what you should be doing instead. Remember, in that first video, I said, leave great breadcrumbs and you'll attract great birds? Well, that line really seemed to hit a nerve with a lot of you. And we also talked about how your trail of breadcrumbs should lead to the top of your funnel. And not just any old funnel, but a specific funnel designed to help you get more high paying clients for your business. So if for some reason you've found this video and you haven't seen the first video in this series, I'd pause this video now and go watch that first video because this second video is going to make a whole lot more sense if you've seen the first one. We also covered the three factors at play that make now the perfect time to double down your efforts on growing your own digital agency. Just a quick reminder of those three factors. Number one, we live in very uncertain times. The OECD recently published a report predicting that the global economy is facing its biggest danger since the GFC. And I believe the only way to secure your future in these uncertain times is to have your hands firmly on the wheel and to be in control of your own destiny. Having your own small business is a great vehicle to gain control over your time and your financial future because it puts you in the driver's seat. The second factor is that in the face of all of this uncertainty, the web continues to go from strength to strength. Remember, the average person spends more time online than all other media outlets combined. And by the year 2040, 95% of all retail purchases will be managed in some way by e-commerce. Yet almost half of small businesses don't even have a website. Elementor, a great page building plugin, just raised $15 million in investment, and there are acquisitions and funding rounds going off on every street corner in the web space. And what this all means is that the demand for what it is you do is only going to grow. And finally, the third factor is that a digital agency is a great business model. You get to do creative, fulfilling work with great clients that have a positive impact on the world, and the margins are really high because you're selling digital services. We also covered that perhaps the best thing about having your own successful digital agency is the freedom it gives you to work from wherever you want with whoever you want on the projects that really get you excited. However, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. With the popularity of this opportunity comes great competition. So to make the most of this opportunity, you've got to have some basic structures set up in your business. I also introduce you to some of my favorite success stories like James, who travels the world and runs his business from his laptop. Amber and Chris, who travel the country in an RV with their kids and manage their team from the road. And Samantha, who works from home so she can spend more time with her kids. Whatever your version of freedom is, a digital agency is a great business model to support that freedom. Hey, in case you missed the first video and you have no idea who I am, I'm Troy Dean, CEO and founder of WP Elevation. I started building websites in my spare room for around $1,200 and quickly scaled up to $25,000 websites in a very short space of time just by repositioning myself from a web designer to a consultant. I got to work on some pretty cool projects, including FebFast, a charity that raises money by asking participants to get sponsored to give up alcohol for the month of February. The Victorian Alcohol and Drug Association, which does some amazing work as the peak body for non-profits in the drug and alcohol sector here in Victoria. And Jessica Watson, an Australian girl who sailed around the world by herself in a yacht at the age of 16. I managed to support my fiance who was studying full-time at university to become a psychologist. And I'm very proud to say now that she is a psychologist as well as my wife and a great mother. And the stroke of magic that literally saved my bacon through all of that was putting all of my clients onto recurring revenue care plans and hiring Michelle to manage those care plans 
following the documentation and systems I'd put in place. So all I had to do was talk to the clients and sell them more consulting services to help them achieve what they wanted. This gave me the luxury to start to pick and choose the projects I accepted and reduced a lot of stress. It also gave me the freedom to travel with my wife when she'd graduated. And as I said in the previous video, I'm not gonna bore you with all the photos of our adventures traveling around the world because that's all a bit cheesy for my liking. What I really wanna talk about is how you can capitalize on the opportunity that's in front of you right now to build a highly profitable, low stress business as a freelancer or digital agency. It all comes down to the process. I've interviewed some great entrepreneurs on my podcast and yes, just for fun, I'm going to name drop. Seth Godin, Guy Kawasaki, Kate Toon, Neil Patel, Andrew Warner, Kim Doyle, Miles Beckler, Chris Lemmer, Lisa Sabin Wilson, and the list goes on and on, including the man himself, Michael E. Gerber, author of The E-Myth. And one topic comes up over and over again, the importance of process. One of my favorite success stories over the years is Jasmine Andrews, a mum in Sydney with two daughters, Indigo and Ruby. Now both of her daughters have a diagnosis of mild autism spectrum disorder. This meant speech, language and developmental delays. In fact, her eldest, Indigo, was mostly non-verbal until the age of four. And as Jasmine told me, she didn't have paid maternity leave, so she started building simple websites from home. Then she was made redundant on the day she was due to return to her job, and she knew she couldn't get a new job because her kids needed round-the-clock care. So she decided that growing her business was her only choice. Failure was not an option. The good news is that after hundreds of hours of early intervention, both girls are now in mainstream education and doing really well. And Jasmine's managed to grow her business to a multiple six-figure turnover, which has given her a certain independence and security. Now, if there's any chance where Jasmine can use her effort to have an impact, she puts in the effort. She stays detached from the outcome and just follows the process. She's very lucky she took the plunge to build a team to support her so that things kept rolling when life got tough systems and processes. It gives me chills to know that the processes I've developed are helping people like Jasmine and thousands of others all over the world live out their version of freedom. So the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to understand what's possible and I want to encourage you to use what you're learning in this video series to achieve your version of freedom. So shall we dive in and take a look at what this funnel looks like? All right, it all starts with your outreach and inbound marketing efforts, sending people to the very first page in your funnel. We call this the landing page. Now don't worry, the outreach and inbound efforts I'm talking about are what we referred to in the previous video as the great breadcrumbs that you leave around to attract great birds. These breadcrumbs should lead people to one place and one place only, your landing page. Once people arrive at your landing page, a certain percentage of them will opt in to watch your case study or training video or read your educational blog post. Whatever content you offer on this page, this is really the only piece of content you need in your business. This one piece of content is designed to show your ideal client that you can help them and that you have a process in place to help them achieve what they want to achieve. And your breadcrumbs are literally just tiny pieces from your one piece of content that form a trail back to your landing page. So for example, if I was leaving breadcrumbs for this video series, I might find opportunities where people are asking questions about how to get clients as a freelancer or digital agency and answer those questions by saying something like, well, it's like trying to catch birds with a net. You're better off leaving great breadcrumbs and attracting great birds. Then when people engage with that answer, I can send them to my landing page to learn more. Meta, I know, but it makes sense. I guarantee you that from one piece of content, you could come up with dozens of breadcrumbs and that's enough for a year's worth of great leads and high paying clients. Now let's talk about the one piece of content that you showcase in your funnel. In this one piece of content, you will reveal one part of your process in great detail. That's right, you'll show your ideal clients that you can help them by actually helping them in advance. This one piece of content also reveals that the one thing you're teaching them in detail is just one piece of a larger puzzle. And in order to get the results they're looking for, they really need to have all the pieces of the puzzle in place. Now the truth is, once they've seen your process, most people will try and figure this out themselves, and that's fine, they're not your ideal customer. But there is a certain percentage of people who will make it this far and will decide that this is the process they've been looking for and they know they can't do it themselves. 
and these people will apply to get on a call with you to see if they can work with you to help them get it done. This application form is a great way to qualify the wrong prospects out and qualify your ideal clients in. Once they pass the application process, they'll be able to make a booking directly in your calendar to have a conversation. Now, if you really wanna take this up a notch, you'll send them some homework before your call, which will be designed to further position you as the authority and make them even hungrier for your process. So by the time you get on a call with them, they've already decided they want to buy your process and you're just there to make sure they're a good fit and to facilitate the transaction. Now, when you get this really dialed in, you'll actually have various products they can choose from. And this call becomes about working together to choose the right product for their specific situation. It actually becomes like an enrollment call rather than a sales call. They go through a checkout process, make their payment, and you get them onboarded. Now, turning your services into products is a whole other conversation we can have another time. But for now, I just wanted to show you the overall architecture of how this funnel works. Now at this point, the most common question I get is, well, what do I teach in that one piece of content and how do I work out the breadcrumbs? And I'm glad you asked. And of course, you know by now that I have a framework and a worksheet for that. I hope you're taking notes because this is the crux of the special worksheet I'm gonna send you in a few minutes. Here's how it works. Chances are there's more than one service that you provide in your business right now. Maybe it's web design, branding, UX, UI, development, SEO, PPC, whatever it is you do, I want you to identify the one service that you enjoy the most, that you're really good at, and that adds the most value to your clients. So just take a moment and identify that one service that is the most valuable to your clients and that you're really good at and really enjoy. Okay, you've got that written down. Now I want you to make a note of all of the deliverables that are usually part of that service. I'm gonna walk you through two examples just so you can see how this can be applied. The first example is designing a brand for our client. Let's say that your branding process consists of five main stages. Identifying the business goals and the brand personality, conducting market and user research, producing the visual elements of the brand, logo, typography, colors, etc. Producing the corporate brand style, such as business cards, stationery, swag, and website, and then developing a style guide or brand book so that the company can roll out the brand across the various assets they have, like social media and staff uniforms, for example. Now, I'm just making this process up as an example, but if that is your process, what you wanna do is write down all of the things that you would do in order to deliver those five main stages of the process. At the end of this, you should have quite a large list of all of the tasks involved, all of the deliverables included in this project. And your job is to identify what it is that most people go looking for when thinking about branding or rebranding their company. What's the lowest hanging fruit or the sexiest thing you can teach them that's going to attract the most attention from your ideal client? Now let's pretend your ideal client is development agencies or SEO agencies that have a good stable of clients, but they don't do branding or design in-house and they're looking for a branding or design partner. They might go searching for something like font pairing trends for the current year. I'm just, again, making this up as an example. However, if that is the lowest hanging fruit or the most searched for thing in your space, you might put together an epic guide on Google font pairings or Adobe font pairings for the current year. The purpose of this one piece of content in the middle of your funnel is to teach your face off about everything you know about font pairing. And then you reveal that, hey, getting a good font pair is just one part of the process. A great pair of fonts doesn't mean anything if you haven't got a great logo, a great brand voice, good personality, good corporate styling, a great website, and you haven't done the market research and the user research. And in fact, if all of this doesn't tie into your corporate business goals and your strategic objectives, it doesn't mean anything. So what you're doing is positioning the font pairing thing as being super helpful, helping your ideal client, blowing them away with your breadth and depth of knowledge in that area, but then revealing that this is just one piece of the larger puzzle. Let's talk about SEO as another example because this is a common one that comes up all the time. Now the steps involved in a great SEO process might include keyword research, analyzing Google's first page and creating something different or better, optimizing front page SEO, making your content look awesome and building links to your page. Again, I'm just making this up. 
So let's say your ideal client is web design agencies who don't do SEO, but are looking to partner with someone who does SEO. The lowest hanging fruit for them might be keyword research, because while they're building websites for clients, they're probably researching how to do keyword research. So your one piece of content could be an epic piece that teaches them how to do keyword research the right way in great detail, and then reveals that this is just one piece of the larger puzzle. Remember, whatever your specific situation is, the purpose of this one piece of content is to show your ideal client that you have the expertise to help them, and more importantly, that you have a process you can take them through to get them where they want to be. And I hope you've realized that all those headaches you've had about producing all this content everyone keeps telling you you need to attract clients, well, those headaches just went away because I promise you, this is the only piece of content you need in your business. Now, I know you have some questions about this, like what happens when a client goes through my funnel and signs on? How do you keep the project on track? How do you onboard them? How do you get their content from them? How do you manage their expectations throughout the project and avoid scope creep? How do you turn this new client into a stream of recurring revenue instead of just being one transaction? And the good news is, in a couple of days, I'm gonna send you another training video where I'll walk you through the entire digital agency blueprint and show you how all of these pieces fit together so you can win clients, delight them by delivering great projects, and increase your recurring revenue. Okay, so I'm gonna send you the special worksheet for this video in just a moment. But before I do, I just wanna remind you that now is the perfect time for you to focus on growing your business as a freelancer or digital agency. It puts you firmly in the driver's seat and allows you to take control of how you spend your time and can provide a great deal of financial security. The demand for what it is you do is only going to grow over the coming years. And if you get these processes installed in your business, you'll set yourself up for a great future and get the freedom of working wherever you want, whenever you want, and with whoever you want. Hey, thanks for staying with me till the end. That worksheet should be in your email inbox by now, so go print it out, fill it in, and do me a favor, leave me a comment below and tell me what's been most valuable about this video series so far. And keep your eyes on your email inbox for that next video in a couple of days. Until then, I'm Troy Dean.